We just got back from the third annual Victims Matter rally presented by Sarah Ford and Essie Van. This rally serves as an important reminder that our justice system needs to prioritize victims. And the more that I watch prosecutors in action, the more grateful I am for the work of Big Creighton Energy Waters and his team. Creighton brought the Murdoch case to the jury with passion, dedication, and an immense amount of well-researched facts. He was convinced that Alec Murdoch murdered his wife and son in cold blood, and you could feel that in his voice, day in and day out. From beginning to end, Creighton built a case out of bricks, leaving no room for the jury to see reasonable doubt. But if Creighton built his case out of bricks, then Megan Birchdead and Joel Kozak, the prosecutors in the 2018 Kolochi trial, built their case against Michael Kolochi out of sticks. And Michael was represented by Andy Savage, a big bad wolf that makes Dick Harputlian look like one of the three little pigs, but a lot meaner. One of the biggest similarities and major differences between the Kalucci case and what we saw go down in Alec Murdoch's murder trial is how the defendant was defended. Shortly after his arrest in early May 2016, almost a full year after Sarah's death, Michael Kalucci hired Charleston attorney Andy Savage. To understand how Andy conducts himself in the courtroom, I'm going to need you to first picture Dick Harpulian. Picture his arrogance, his entitlement, his rudeness, his feigned audacity at what he's hearing when he wants to make a point to the jury that this response from the state's witness is not only an affront to his client, but to society at large. But remove Dick's sputtering and his afternoon chair naps in the courtroom. Okay, take all of those things, but now place this distilled version of Dick in a room with the case files and sit him down at the desk and picture him actually reading the files and taking notes and not relying completely on his ability at ad-libbing and a gross miscalculation of his own charm. Pop some glasses on him, give him a belly-first posture, and there you have Andrew John Savage III. He is more calculating, quicker on his feet, smarter, more terrifying, and far more effective than Dick Harpulian in a courtroom. So the fact that Andy was able to convince some jurors that Sarah didn't die at Michael's hands seems to be an accomplishment. And Michael certainly got his money's worth because Andy burned down Sarah's village in an attempt to save his client. He dehumanized her at every turn through humiliation, stereotype, belittling her, and frankly, all women, and bringing in details of her life that he wanted the jury to believe added up to alleyway suicide. Worse than that, the prosecution let him do this. The prosecution had at its fingertips several ways to show financial stress as a potential motive in the murder they say Michael committed. Despite Michael's status as a Charleston jewelry store owner, which, according to our sources, he only attained with his family's help, he had a chaotic financial history for decades that appeared to be getting increasingly worse. What we didn't hear in trial was that Michael had a history of not paying mortgages and somehow evading consequence. We are still digging through his financial records, and wow, there are so many. This week, Liz spoke with one of Sarah's friends, Stephanie Merrill, who told us about what Sarah was like and how it was ultimately Sarah's relationship with Michael that became her downfall. The thing we learned from Stephanie is that Sarah knew how to pick herself up off the ground. At the time she was killed, Sarah was reportedly putting together a plan to take Bishop and leave Michael once and for all. She'd expressed this plan to her family. She was within days of executing it. In the face of a failing marriage and failing finances, and on the day when the woman he loved was grieving over another man, a man he could not possibly compete with, did Michael experience the sharper part of Sarah's personality? the part that could ignite a temper. Stay tuned, stay pesky. 
stay in the sunlight.